What's up everybody? Today we're going to be talking about lights. You guys have asked for how do I do my lights and here comes the video. This is how the lights happen. Uh, first thing though, I'm Andy. Welcome into the studio. First thing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop these from blinking all over the place because that's, that's a little intense, isn't it? So welcome into the studio. I'm Andy. We're going to talk about, like I said, these lights today. So skip ahead if you want to get straight to that content. Meantime, I'm just going to tell you uh, how about hit that subscribe button. If you've not already, you don't know who I am. Everybody puts it in their videos. I don't usually. So here's a blurb from me. I'm just a freelance creative guy. I produce music. I make music. Uh, doing guitar solos right now for a great show coming up out on Nickelodeon this year, 2024. Guitar solos like main character right up front. It's going to be so sick. A lot of content's going to come out of that stuff. Vintage synth content. I'm about this afternoon to do another video with my uh, with my 1979 Mini Moog, right? So we're learning synthesis and stuff. And I've got an ARP 2600 coming next month, and a DX7 and an ARP Odyssey. And we're, we're going to be I'm going to be doing stuff with all of those keyboards. It's going to be so fun. Uh, but that's me. Uh, um, this video, I'm a, I, I edit videos in the daytime for money, so like, I'm, I'm not gonna, it's the daytime now, isn't it? These aren't, gonna, these aren't edited. My videos are never edited. We just run live. We bounce around. We can, hey, here's our Ableton look. We can get back over here. We might talk about this light right up above here on this speaker uh, in this program particularly. And so that's how we roll through. It was about learning and having fun. Um, so if you're here just to be entertained with cool editing, bye. The rest of you, let's get into it. So a, a lighting program like you just saw with the lights bouncing all around. Uh, it, it only takes not very many things. We've got the LED lights. I ordered these from Amazon. They were for four of them. It was under $100. Super simple. Uh, LED par lights, and these are DMX compatible. So what that means is. The old kind, oh, I should say too, sometimes people get upset when they hear me breathing. This is not a short SM7B. This is a Slate VMS mic, right? It's what I use in my studio for a lot of things. And for a lot of reasons, I'm not going to change it. But sometimes you might hear me breathe. Sorry if that bothers you. Bye. So uh, back to this. We've got the lights, the four lights. Like I said, they weren't expensive. Uh, the cables, the four cables, the DMX cables were almost as <laughs> expensive as the lights, right? Uh, but you got lights, cables, and interface. The interface is called an Intec, E-N-N-T-E-C, Intec USB Pro. And that was the most costly thing of all of this. It was like 200 something dollars. The software to run this stuff that I use is called LightKey. LightKey runs for free with up to a certain number of lights, which I happen to fall within. I think the cutoff is like 25 controls, um, and you'll learn what controls are, like things you can do with a light. Each light has a control. And so mine, I can get by with five. So five times four is 20 controls, and I'm good to go forever in the free version coming in under the 25 controls. So uh, that's easy, and that's what makes this free for me. If you got more lights than that, you're too bad. You might have to pay a little something for it. But uh, for me, it's free. So this is light key. This is what it looks like. Um, the interface is a little bit weird. It takes a little bit kind of getting used to and stuff like that. But uh, in any event, we, we like I said, you have your lights, you connect them up, and I might go into more detail maybe in another video. We're going to try and keep this from going on forever and not get too detailed like with this stuff. But as you can see, P1, P2, P3, P4, etc. Those are my lights that I've dropped onto here. And uh, yeah, that's all four of them. That one spans down to here. And so these numbers are like the channels. So like I was saying, I did I do five for each of my lights. And what are, the, what are these things? Five. R, G, B, dimmer, strobe, right? Those are the five controls. R, G, and B, those are color controls, setting the color to do what it wants. The dimmer controls, those are, you know, ups, downs, blink, whatever. And then strobe is strobe. And so I have those controls for each light. That's all I have. Um, this I'm using just a generic fixture, I guess, whatever. Here's lots of fixtures. Like it's the libraries these programs have for the lights is, is just nuts. But so that's how we do our thing. And you can see here, we've got like, this is happening. Like there's things happening in here. So 
Let's go ahead. Uh, there are MIDI channels. I'm gonna, and I'll talk more about that in just a second, but we're gonna hook these channels back up to the lights so they start doing stuff so you can see. So at any time that this stuff is running, you see it in the program. So that's pretty cool. You can work on lights when you're on your couch with, you know, watching TV at night or something on your laptop. Um, Cause you could still see them if you, if you want to. But so uh, basically what happens here and you can see these things are bouncing all around. So if I stop this and I click one of these, so here's a program, one of my light, here's my little programs running. And so that is a whole other topic, like how this light key stuff works. This program again is called light key and there's lots of tutorials out there about how to use light key. A lot of people like in churches and stuff like to use this stuff um, and probably, you know, small club shows and bands and stuff. Um, but it, it runs like an old school lighting program, which is to say you've got, uh, usually you, you do a thing with like faders, sliders, you do like set colors and then you kind of set your dimmers, what your dimmers are going to do. Then you might do like your effect things. Um, it, things are like kind of layered over top of each other. So I approached my setup like that initially. Um, and I, I probably, I, I mean, I definitely need to change, but I'm just waiting to like learn more before I dump a bunch of time into here and come up with like my, the next iteration of this basically. So what I have available to me basically is like this color set right here, which has, you can see red is behind me. I can swap that out and then we're blue behind me. Um, I can like go just to this front light, turn those other ones off. We can do this one, which lights up this light right here, which is good for solos. When I grab my guitar, we've got uh, this one I use a lot, this slow fade, which is basically just a timed fade that fades in for like one or two seconds. Um, none of these things are timed per se to like beats or anything like that. But what happens, it's kind of cool, is when we, we work with, with our lights in MIDI. So we're starting and stopping the light control like it's on and it's off in time to our project so therefore even if it's fading inside it still is it, it all seems in time so it's, it kind of works you know like it works out it comes together and so as we're running a program like you saw you get to see exactly like what all your lights are doing and stuff like that and you're like okay so we understand we have physical lights in the room we've connected them to the thing We've got this program doing this thing. Now, uh, how, how are they connected, right? Okay, easy enough. We just go to Ableton and look in the sidebar. And once you've done this part of things and you've saved it and you have that, um, you open up Ableton you go to your user library and you see like, oh shit, look, light key live triggers. Wonder what that is, right? It's so dark in here now. <coughs> And there's all your light key stuff, right? That you put in there. So I start looking and of course you can see there's my name, Harp Studio. And these are projects that have been saved on this machine. It's like, awesome. This is the one I'm kind of working on. And ooh, looky there. Didn't see anything familiar about all the names of these things, which are MIDI clips that you can tell by the little, the little icon there. So you can see that all those names in that list match the names of the programs over here. And you're like, oh, cool, sweet. So we're making progress here. Over in Ableton, we have that available to us. Then we, what we're gonna do is add MIDI channels. MIDI channel here, MIDI channel here, MIDI channel here. Um, and so, like I said, initially with this stuff, I've set it up to be kind of like the old school light style. So. I was thinking this channel would kind of be setting my colors, then some dimmer work here, and maybe any more effects special type stuff here. Um, it's not really entirely how it's worked out in practice. Um, these do set the colors, and I, I end up usually doing that slow fade one. And lately I've been using these rear one, rear two, rear front three, front four, those, these four, which basically just, you can see what it's doing. It just turns a light on and on and off when I want it to, just a single light. Um, so I'm kind of learning that there's I can have more control over this stuff. And so we can see these clips are here. To start that out, if we have a program over here, all we do is drag it over here and drop it. Boom. And then that one's running, you know, which is red steel, it's called. So we should see some... Whoops, there's a... <laughs> like, whoops! There's a no music in and everything else in that. But so... Back to this scene. 
Um, but so you drop them over, there they are. If we go in and look at them, you can see there's nothing going in, on in here but MIDI notes, right? So that tells us, oh, okay, so this program, if I just press this key, look at that, it's gonna light a light. And then I realize, oh, all these. If I press, oh, there's the strobe one. So each one of these notes, once I've been inside of light key and I've made these programs happen, it assigns them to like MIDI things. And you're like, oh, okay. So each one of those has a MIDI note now. Now it was a bit tedious, like, you know, at one point or another, I probably dragged all of these over here to, to see exactly what each one's note was and know for sure. But what you end up doing is this. So here's our, uh, for this section. And you can see exactly what these light moves are doing. So in the first light clip, we simply are just setting the base colors. And then this thing, which is, it may even probably be getting overridden by this one. And so that's where I cur currently am like right this minute is learning what overrides other stuff and what I can have at one time. Cause I'm learning, I can kind of do a lot of this all in one MIDI clip. So that's what you're seeing here. Each one of these is a light. So if this note here, you can see pops this one on in front of me. This one here does this one over here. This one is back behind me and this one. So we do uh, one, two, three, it's pretty easy enough. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's it, like in a nutshell. That is how you get your lights to be programmed. So we can look at uh, more than one of them, right? Go into the verse. Oh, it's some jams. So what I'm doing with this one is I'm setting this light. We're bouncing after every four counts. We're changing between the main setting between like blue and a red. And at the end of the measure, popping the strobe, right? And then there's these things up here. So those are single light pops and what they're catching the da -na -na, da -na -na. So what we end up with is this. Which ends up kind of like flowing back to front. Da -na -na, da -na -na, da -na -na, da -na -na. So, I mean, you get like a whole new set of things to kind of think about and look at when you start messing with programming lighting right and you get you'll get a whole new scene once you go to the chorus or whatever this they call this part so these have slower moves you know it's not as much stuff going on a little strobe at the end in the next part and we get ready to go to the next one and we're back into this program again. Down here. And so what's happening down here, there's actually, we've got a solo light, right? This one pops on, but it's not staying on right now because this four pattern popping, this three pattern above it is, is popping that same light on and off, there it is. So perhaps if I did this, let's deactivate all of those notes and run this again. I don't think this channel's connected. Oh, it is. So it's all connected. It's sending its data. Oops, let's go in and look. We're gonna shift its start point. Yeah, it's still getting blinked, right? So that's what I'm talking about. Like I'm currently working through what overrides what and how I can, uh, you know, have exactly the lights that I want on and steady and then also flashing like all at the same time. So that's a me thing. I just don't I don't wholly understand light key and, you know, exactly how to pull off those things. But it's coming right along the next video. Uh, it'll be it'll be more there. Um, now, the other one more cool thing about about this light key program is that some music back here all of these buttons on this thing so i can go to any one of these and right click on it 
and you, of course you can do a lot of stuff. The program is pretty pretty strong. External control. You can see this one's set to a thing. You're like, oh, okay. X so this thing learns your MIDI commands. Uh, so I have over here on my LPD8 controller off to my right hand, uh, a button now learned that will just, uh, well, let's turn, make sure this stuff's off. So it'll turn my lights on easy enough, or I can press this one and get into that slow fade. So if I just, you know, I'm sitting around, I just start jamming. It's like, oh, we just, we don't have a program, but you can still run these programs from this, um, which is kind of cool. I could have uh, a whole other controller, like another LPD8 or something, um, just just to run light programs. Um, but, you know, I haven't gone into that far because I run the light programs from Ableton. But uh, there are things, improv sessions happen in, constantly. So... Um, that's where I've kind of been going with that. Uh, maybe even a, another foot controller where I could control the hit these MIDI and hit these MIDI controls with my feet, uh, just like everything else around here. That's what I need. More things for my feet, please God. Uh, and maybe do it that way. Um, but so there's multiple ways to run this stuff. Like I'm saying, you can do it with the MIDI things. You can do it from MIDI clips in Ableton. Uh, it'll listen to your music and do all that kind of crap too, and bump to your BPM. Um, so that, my friends, is our look at light key and running, you know, cool ass lights like this. <clears throat> like, can I sing today? Let's see if you hung around this long. Let's see. Welcome home. I need words. I won't grab the guitar. But we'll just sing. Do we have reverb? We do because we have a knob on our LBD8 here to just give us our reverb right quick. Let's turn the main off. Now, normally, of course, I'd have my guitar and we'd be fully rocking out. But, dude, that song is so good, it's hard not to just sing it for a second. So, cheers, everybody. If you have questions, put them down there. If you have comments about my breathing and things like that, don't put them down there because that's stupid. Cheers, rock your day. <laughs>